We can all dream of owning a top-end system with a Ryzen 5950X, 64 gigs of RAM and a top-end graphics card that will play pretty much any game in 4K max settings. But as I'm sure you're aware, with great power comes great expense. So we decided to see what it would be like to play games on something a bit more realistic. Say a whole setup that comes in in under £1,500. But what would you be able to get for that money? And exactly what sort of gaming experience are you going to get? Well, my name is Rage Darling and I'm here to do all that hard work for you. And by hard work, I mean playing a lot of my favourite video games and seeing if I can still have a good time on a budget. Let's take a look at our system for today and get gaming. This is the Scan Gamer RTX PC. I've chosen this model as it features an AMD Ryzen 5600X CPU, which is the lowest model in the current 5000 series lineup, but it is an absolute powerhouse of a CPU for its price. It features six cores and 12 threads, along with a boost clock of up to 4.6 gigahertz as standard, which means it will be easily up to the task of playing the latest games. As its Ryzen CPU will also be good for streaming and even a bit of content creation like editing videos up to 4K. For gaming especially, it's really easy to get carried away with your CPU and blow your budget, leaving less for other components, but I'm pretty confident that this 5600X will be a great option. Also inside this PC, we have 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200MHz memory. You can game with 8 gigs of RAM, but you will be right on the limits, especially for AAA titles, so 16 gigs is still the best option to go for. For storage, it features a 1TB WD Blue SN550 NVMe SSD, which offers super fast performance and should be big enough for you to store all of your files and a good few games for now. The convenience of a desktop PC means that storage is one of the easiest things to upgrade later down the line if needed. Let's peer up the PC to see just how fast this SSD is. Just as I thought, pretty fast. SSDs have been my go-to for OS location for quite a while now, and results speak for themselves, really. For our graphics card, we have the ASUS RTX 3060. This should provide a good match to our 5600X and other components, and hopefully allows us to be able to turn on some more demanding graphics settings while still keeping some solid frame rates. Lastly, as this is a pre-built PC by Scan, it features only the highest quality components from the top brands and has gone through a whole suite of testing, including a 24-hour burn test to make sure it is ultra stable. Oh, and it comes with a two-year warranty and seven-day technical support should you need it. It certainly makes the whole buying process a lot easier because this way you're able to rest comfortably knowing that you've got the best possible PC for your budget rather than having to agonize over every component, worry about whether they're compatible, and not to mention the anxiety-ridden process of fitting it all together, we all know how scary that first CPU installation process can be. For the rest of the setup, I've chosen the Yama GB2570 HSU monitor, as it's designed for gaming and features a 165Hz refresh rate at 1080p. So it should help achieve a super smooth gaming experience that you just can't get on a console. I've also chosen the Corsair K55 RGB Pro keyboard, the Corsair Harpoon RGB Pro mouse, and the Corsair HS50 headset because having used these peripherals myself, I know they're a premium experience and make gaming so much more enjoyable. All in all, you can put all of these products in your basket on the Scan website for just under £1,500. Now we've covered the PC and the peripherals, let's see just how well this setup performs in some games. Naturally, this bit took literally hours because, I mean, I had to make sure my findings were 100% accurate, right? Cue the montage. All right, everything's set to high, which was really surprising because that's the GeForce default setting, recommends you to go high. Ray tracing's also on, so let's see what this will look like. Okay, this is actually quite smooth getting about 60 60 frames right now in a in an intense situation in the game driving by trying to shoot these guys 
but I'm getting really, really, really smooth frames. It's actually quite satisfying. So now my frames have gone up okay. to about 70, as I'm just sort of like Focus sitting in this car, just kind of like uh, chilling, going into like more of a passive cutscene. But it's actually quite interesting. In like a mid battle action scene where I'm like riding and shooting, the frame rate was pretty consistent and it looked really smooth. Do you know, the, the ray tracing shadows are actually really surprising because usually with them, um, Sort of like lower end systems, you can't really take advantage of the ray tracing, which is really unfortunate. But uh, with this, like, I'm actually really surprised it's running on high with both shadows and lighting. And you can see like your reflections here on the floor from the rain, from the lights on the top, and the game is still performing at like a solid 65, 70 frames. Like this is this is actually quite surprising for me. I've maxed all of these settings out. I've even added NVIDIA Reflex and I've boosted it. And I'm rocking a solid 120 frames right now, which is actually pretty impressive. This part is probably one of the most like intensive parts of the entire game when you're launching down from the from the jump pad. Dropship. Right, we're heading straight into a firefight. We're rocking about 120 frames right now. I'm gonna see whether or not it holds up. See what an execution looks like, how smooth that animation is. Come here. Oof. Oh no! No, 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 no! No, no! So nothing super intensive happening right now, but I've got about 130 frames, 140 frames, which is actually pretty impressive, considering I have everything maxed out to ultra as well. So in terms of graphics, I have everything pretty much high, not completely ultra, because I do want to turn on NVIDIA DLSS. Um, this will give me more of a sharper picture and uh, boost my performance somewhat. So straight away, it's reporting that I'm getting 130 frames. And for a game that's so graphically intense like this in certain scenarios, that's actually really impressive. I'm genuinely really surprised about how smooth this is. I'm not sacrificing frames for quality either. I can clearly distinguish like people on the rooftop. Enemy dropping into the AR. Gonna finish you! No! He killed himself! No! Uh oh. Uh oh. No, there was someone right in the building and I didn't even see him! Very smooth, very clean animations. So it looks like everything's on sort of medium to high again, which is quite good. So this should look pretty realistic. Uh, it looks weird and I, it looks really real. I don't know if I like that or not. Oh, his hand looks so grossly so real. I'm still capping out 165 frames as well, considering that I've got it medium to high. This is a brand new game, recently released. Oh my God. There's something breathing down my neck. Yeah, not much else to report on this. High frames, good quality. Can I stop playing now? Ah, what's that? No, no, what the heck, man? What is that? That's a bird. Ah! Bruh, nah, I'm done. <laughs> So, after my very serious testing, here is what we came back with. Across all of these games, I was easily able to achieve excellent frame rates using between medium and high settings, sometimes in ultra. The Ryzen 5600X even handled Cyberpunk with zero problems at all, and the RTX 3060 even let me turn on NVIDIA DLSS and ray tracing in Warzone to offer some stunning visuals. To look just beyond numbers though, how did this actually feel like while I was playing? Well, aside from some fiddling with the settings a little bit to find the sweet spot, playing games on this system felt really great. The gameplay animations were smooth, and in some places the graphics were surprisingly good, considering the overall price versus higher end systems. I'm not gonna lie, 
The results shocked me a little bit, and I'm definitely not salty considering in some circumstances the games performed as well as my three grand system at home. Definitely not salty. That being said, it's 100% worth making sure you buy a monitor with a higher refresh rate than the standard 60 Hz because the CPU and GPU are more than capable in even the most demanding games. If you had a slightly higher budget, then I would recommend probably pushing up to a 1440p monitor with a slight graphic setting reduction. But ultimately, you need your monitor to match your kit inside your system to really make the most of your money. So, what did you think about the system? Do you think I should test some more 3XS systems, try before you buy style? Or maybe you'd like to see the system perform on some different games? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of our next video. I've been Rage Darling and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.